Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. Today on Another View on Health, tips of the trade to stay healthy and eat smart during the holiday season. Our guests today have some practical and engaging ways to help you stay on track, even as you celebrate with rich, delicious food, special adult beverages, and allowing yourself a pass at the gym. Mm. Co-host Dr. Keith Newby is here, along with Bev Sell of the Five Points Community Market, behavioral edu- health educator Beth Jernigan, and certified calisthenics specialist Cortland Mariner. But first, this is the last day of our holiday membership drive. It's your chance to support another view with your membership. And to sweeten the pot, we've got a $2,000 challenge, which means that every dollar you pledge, up to two grand will be matched dollar for dollar. Let's go to Pledge Central with Morning Edition anchor Sandra Woodward to see where we are. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Barbara. And guess what? Dan Cawley made it. He's oh, here. fantastic. Hey, Dan. How you doing? Hi, Barbara. You, you're saying it's the last day, but I just got here. Oh, well, guess what? You have a lot of work to do. Well, let's get to it. Because we're going to get that two grand in here, aren't we? Yes, yes absolutely. We <laughs> 889-9476 is the number to call to make your pledge of support for what I like to call appointment listening. Another view on Fridays. You find yourself here every Friday. Well, I hope that you are a member. 889-9476 is how to become a member, how to renew that membership, how to give the gift of membership. Tis the giving season, after all. Tis is. It not? is. I, I feel very giving today. Do you? Because I'm a member of WHRV. Mm-hmm. And I know, you know, you say people find themselves here. Nobody finds themselves here. We, Explain yourself. We, we, <laughs> thank you for that call. We come here on purpose. We right. want to hear Bye-bye. Barbara Ham Lee. We want to hear another Aww, view. You guys. <laughs> we we are listening at this hour, not because we just happened, not because the knob broke, right? We're here. You're here as, and I'm a member. I'm a listener. You're here, and I'm speaking to you out there. You're here because you want to listen to this programming, and this is the time when you can give back and let folks know that I want to make sure this show and shows like it still have a place on our radio. So call right now, 889-9476. Become a member. Support this program right now and we do have that challenge going right. on so we have a two thousand dollar challenge how does that a challenge work Barbara? that every dollar that you give will be matched dollar for dollar up to two thousand dollars so we've had uh, members um from before come in at that amount on their own so every dollar counts <laughs> and we really appreciate whatever support you want to give if you enjoy the programming that we do here on another view the different perspective that we give you on another view then please call right now 889-9476 and, and make that pledge got of support the health thing going on today please um barbara please don't tell dr newby that i just got back from the diner where i had fried oreos <laughs> because i'm guessing that is probably oh. not on the healthy diet plan that he's going to be talking about <laughs> He's actually laughing. You know what? what? <laughs> it's not on the plan, believe me. Gosh, and, darn it. And don't tell him that I just ate in the car drive through to get here, because I doubt that that's on the plan either. Oh, Maybe gosh. we should tune in. What do you think, Dan? We should yeah. probably I, listen to the next hour. I think we should. Absolutely. You should tune in, because we're going to have some great tips. And we're actually going to talk to some folks about um, healthy eating from the farmer's market, which is just fabulous. Yeah, I don't think yeah, you, you find fried Oreos there. No, you won't find no. fried Oreos there. Don't think so. 889. Eight, Nine, so. nine four seven six is how you can pledge your support to another view. And I know you want to call right now because you want to be listening to uh, the next uh, hour or so uh, without any interruptions. So make the call. Make that pledge right now at 889-9476. Double the impact of your pledge since we do have a dollar for dollar match happening right now up to $2,000. And if you're wondering how much it costs to be a member, it really costs whatever works for your budget. We like to suggest, like a serving suggestion, the $5 a month plan. Not so bad. But but nobody pays attention to servings. We all eat too much. So why not go to the ten dollar a month plan or the twenty dollar <laughs> like a month the way plan? You, think, Dan. you know you want you more. You're in a giving mood. I'm in a giving mood. It, so so let me get this straight though. So if I called right now and I made a say a fifty dollar like this person right now, mm-hmm. this person who just called right now. So maybe they give a fifty dollar pledge. It immediately becomes a hundred. Mm-hmm. Right? Absolutely. Somebody like your matches math. it. If, if they give, if they're going to give a hundred dollar pledge, it immediately becomes two hundred. 
I see where you're see, going with that. That's dynamite. So why aren't these phones ringing? People need to I thank think you they for are. that They're call. Ringing. People need to call right now. 889-9476. 1-800-940-7170. That makes it ring. Or if you go online to whhrv.org, look for the little donate button. Mm-hmm. You can make it ping, and we'll hear. Do we get the ding still? Do we? And get you the get noise? the ching. Yes. We get the ching. Thank you very right. much. <laughs> and it's Pet Pledge Friday, so you can tell us all about your pets. You can tell us all about uh, your friends, furry friends at home, or you can just tell us about the shows like another view that you want to make sure are still here two three four five years from now now's the time to speak up thank Give you because that'll be about the time for me to retire so that's really good keep okay, it going exactly. oh well if it's retirement time then 35 years from now absolutely 889-9476 we're about to go into uh, hearing about some healthy tips for getting through the holidays which clearly dan and i need to listen to get out those oreos 889-9476 whrv.org dollar for dollar match happening right now during another view let us hear from you and thank you so much for your support Discussing today's topics from an African-American perspective, this is Another View. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Another View. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. It is the time of giving. Tis the season to give. So if you're not already a member of WHRV, please decide to join by dialing 889-9476. But it's also the season to be jolly, to eat and drink well, to party, to skip the gym. Whoa, do we really get a pass on a healthy lifestyle just because it's the holidays? Our guests today say we can enjoy the festivities and still stay on track. So let's meet them. Bev Sell is the founder and general manager of the Five Points Community Farm Market. Hey, Bev, welcome back. So glad to have you. Absolutely. Beth Jernigan is a behavioral health educator and a nutrition advocate. advocate. There you go. How are you, Beth? I'm very well. Thanks for having me. Great. Thank you for being here. Cortland Mariner is a certified calisthenics specialist. You're going to you're going to help us to, to stay in shape. huh? All right. <laughs> My co-host is here. Cardiologist Dr. Keith Newby. How are you, Keith? Oh, I'm not hanging in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all going to try to eat more healthy, but I tell you, this is a tough time of year in order to stay on track. So here's here's my first question. You know, what's the biggest thing, and I'm going to start with you, Bev, do you think that people do to derail themselves as soon as the holidays start in terms of, of eating healthy? But Beth, I mean, when you go to that spread, now really, is that carrot stick on top of that cracker as good as <laughs> that, you know, cream cheese and spinach dip that's with the and the cheese with the nuts and, you know, yeah. all that no. stuff that's calling to you? Sure. Well, I think <laughs> that the food that we typically have in abundance at this time of the year, especially in the South, is high in fat, sugar and salt. And those foods are strongly reinforcing to us in the brain. And um, so we have to re- realize that, you know, we're and the environment is key. And um, to set yourself up for success by being mindful before you go in about choosing uh, a few things that you really enjoy that are higher calorie foods, but also making sure that you have food that supports your health. So taking some food that you can have a lot of or even eating um, a low calorie meal that's got a lot of volume before you go so that you're naturally going to choose smaller portions of the foods that are higher in fat, sugar and salt. Mm. So it takes some planning and mindfulness, <laughs> and it takes practice. He does mindset, he left. You know, it's just a mindset issue. It's just like anything else. It's, that's why they call it comfort food. I think people get used to doing things a certain way. The biggest issue I found is just habit, you know, and your habits are what they are. The downside, of course, is, you know, we always throw, what they say, throw caution to the wind and just don't worry about it then. But it does always comes back and get you later on. And, you know, really, it's, it's the season. I mean, it's one thing if you just do it that one day, but people are not going to do that. They're going to do it the whole time. They start time, from Thanksgiving and, then and they go all the way says, through yeah, New they Year's. They always say, oh, okay, I'm going to start January 1st. And then here comes January 1st. Okay, I'm going to start January 10th. And then you'll just keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off until you get to where you is. Then it's next, it's next Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> every, every day is a holiday. Yeah. Every day is a holiday. <laughs> 
440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240. Now, those are the phone numbers to call to join our conversation so that we're talking about ways to keep yourself on track during the holidays. What's your biggest issue? What are the things that you struggle with? Let our panel help you out. 440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240. So Cortland, one of the easiest things for somebody to do is say, "Ah, you know, I'm on vacation. I I ate last night. I'm not going to the gym. Is is that a good idea, bad idea? Uh, It's a horrible idea. (laughs) But it's a good idea if you can keep working out where you are. So if you know some type of body weight exercises or things you can do in your room, some yoga, some Pilates, some type of things like that that you know, um, carry those with you. Um, work out work out when you get up. I mean, I might do like a small circuit when I wake up if I'm on travel. Wake up, get out the bed, do a couple push-ups, some body weight squats, some things for my abs. All things you can do just in the comfort of your own home without even having to make your trip to the gym. So, no, but th- but these are things and you have to kind of pre-plan ahead of time. How do you come up with that routine? Uh, well, I came up with it just for just some time uh, messing around, um, being in being in the in the room and all right, cool. I'm gonna try this and see what exercises go with this one or what kind of meshes together from doing some things on the ground. I'll do like four or five exercises on the ground. So I might do some push-ups, sit down and do some six inches or some knee ups or something like that. And then go to some squats and stand up and kind of try to hit every body part. Um, So you want to learn as many exercises, I guess, as you can per body part and then try to just put those together in a creative fashion. So what is a calisthenics specialist? Uh, Someone who teaches people how to maximize their bodies. Um, So calisthenics is all body weight movement, all things that you can do uh, without any external weight. Uh, So things like handstands, gymnastics is a very high Mm. uh, in calisthenics, wrestling is calisthenics. Anything that you're really doing with your body by itself will be termed calisthenics. So running, swimming, all of those things can be calisthenics as well or calisthenics. Uh, So I encourage people to kind of stay in that fold, especially in this time of year um, where we're getting a little tired. Um, your people energy is really low so doing some type of maybe like 30 minute workout you go for a little walk you know, do some abs do some squats you know just something real light uh, just to kind of keep you going get your metabolism going and then you know you can eat how you want to Beth I see you nodding your head yeah so um a lot of people think that, you know, we have to kill it every time we work out. Um, and that's very intimidating, I think, for a lot of people, especially those who aren't really, you know, don't have a long um, experience with exercise. So, you know, uh, the the Goldilocks number for f- physical activity, I'm sure as Dr. Newby knows, that's been recommended is 150 minutes per week of moderate um, exercise. And so for most of us, that could be like 30 to 35 minutes. Um, and if you you know, and I just want to point out that there are a lot of resources um, now uh, with um, obviously the internet and YouTube, and you can actually um, subscribe to exercise um, uh, videos where you get a different series every week to try out. And when you find something that you like, that's the key. That is the key. Mm-hmm. Is finding something that you like so that you'll do it more and more often. And in order to do that, we have to try a lot of different things. I'm not a runner. You'd have to be chasing me with a knife to get me to run. <laughs> so, so I had to find some things that I enjoy that I'm willing to do on a regular basis. And so I think trying a lot of different things is a really good idea. 440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240. What are your biggest challenges as you try to work through the holidays and stay on track? Give us a call. You don't have to pledge any money in order to talk on the show. I know that's what's going on. because that's what, that's what people go, I'm scared to call because I don't want to make a pledge. No. <laughs> this portion of the show, we just want you to join our conversation. 440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240. I'll tell, tell you one thing that I will say I've learned to do, um, chiming in on what was already said, is is I have learned to have to cor- incorporate my activity in my day. Yes. Uh, I don't, for my hours are so bad, I mean, I won't get home a lot of times till 9, 10 o'clock or later at night. And I'll be honest with you, when I'm getting up at 4, 4.30, I am not going to the gym at 11 o'clock at night. I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you, that's not going to happen, but... Because of that, what I've tried to do is I will incorporate in the day. When I get to the uh, office in the Fort Norfolk building, I start on ground level. I park there, and I walk up each flight of the uh, parking deck all the way up to P6. 
go in there, start doing my work there. Then when I go downstairs to go across the street to the hospital, I go down the stairs, walk across the street, you know, and you get trying to get not get hit on Bramerton is <laughs> tough enough. But I run across that street, go to there, and I'll go up the stairs. I don't take the elevator at all anymore. Anymore. So you have year. You- yeah, wow. over a year. I don't take the elevator. I and not only that, stairs. but he also puts it on Facebook, so you yeah. really feel bad. <laughs> because <laughs> Well, you know, I just found that what happens when you do that is you, you get that sense of activity, and it does make a difference. Yes. Uh, it really does. I mean, and when I, when I look at my Fitbit watch at the end of the day, characteristically, at least nine to ten miles I've walked nice. every day, mm. every day, every day, and that's just routine now. So I mean, it's just. So does that make, does that allow you then to to eat more or to well, eat differently the, than you normally no, there, would if you weren't exercising? Uh, there was a article, and I, I feel so lost because I I lost this article. One of those storms we had a few years ago. It was Time Magazine. The front article was entitled "The Myth of Exercise." And it was a really well done article, but it was detailing about people's misconceptions about exercise and eating. And it's and it's really it's intuitive when you think about it because they're saying, listen, you know, if you a lot of people will actually gain weight when they exercise because they eat more, mm-hmm. and they don't know how to cut back and then increase the activity. They will go up on the activity and not go up on the food. So right. then they're wondering why they're not losing weight. Right. It has to be up one, down on the other to make it work. But it really needs to be both. I, I, it's been my experience that people get really frustrated because they can't lose weight, but they. I'm like, well, what are you doing every day? Pushing the remote control button is not going <laughs> right. to, that little bit of thumb exercise is not going to cut it. But I have found characteristically that that is the, what separates the yes. um, men from the boys. So okay. I want to just back. jump in for a second, too, with um, behavioral health. So classic, um, we overestimate the calories we burn in our physical activity. Yeah. And we underestimate <laughs> the calories in the food that we consume. Right. <laughs> so I might have um, a 30-minute walk and then justify eating you know, a cupcake, which could have 800 to 1,200 calories, where I probably only, um, maybe I burned 300 calories during my 30-minute walk. Uh, so when we rely uh, on exercise as weight management without addressing diet first, that that's a classic setup for failure. And so many people do get frustrated because they're like, I'm working out like crazy. I'm like, well, that's all great. What are you eating? Well, I tell you what, just chiming on that one again real quick. <laughs> that same article, it was interesting. They had a, a picture of a muffin. And they show what it took to burn that off. And it, you would just be amazed. It was like you had to walk like 10 miles or you had sure. to, yeah. to be on a treadmill for like three hours. I mean, it was some ridiculous time for it to actually burn off each one of those calories. It was, it was amazing to I see that. I got a good so, one. I got a good that? one. So one basket of tortilla chips uh-huh. that, they, that they put in front of you at a Mexican restaurant. No guacamole at all. Right. You got to do 2,200 jumping jacks. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> Are you serious? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'll never and eat that's with no guacamole at all, and no queso, by the way, which is straight food. Oh just my point that out. <laughs> Well, we do Tell have the, the phones truth. ringing. <laughs> Let's see. Jason joins us from Virginia Beach. Hi, Jason. You're on the air. Hey, how you guys doing? All right. How are you? I'm good. I just wanted to make a comment about um, you know getting in shape or or working that that side of things. Uh, my wife and I do a, a P90X a video series. We've done it for about six years, occasionally here and there, and just don't get intimidated, you know, because you're watching a video where they're doing 30 seconds of pull-ups or something like that, and you can only do five seconds. Don't don't let that defeat you. Like, you know, get into it, see what you can do, take your time, and realize the people that are making these videos have been and are in great shape because they do it continuously and just stay with it. Like, we really have to start off really slow every time we do it and realize, you know, I go from 15 push-ups to 30 within a month and just take your time and have fun with it. Yeah, Fantastic. Jason, thanks so much. You want to respond, Cortland? Absolutely. What Jason said is uh, your prime example of what's key for you uh, is to not judge yourself based off uh, what you see other personal trainers or athletes showing you on these videos because they are highly trained individuals. They do put a lot of time into uh, what they do to bring you content. So uh, when they're doing 30 seconds of pull-ups, I mean, they've trained for that to show you on video very clean reps for that whole 30 seconds so that you can get a good understanding 
understanding of what you can also achieve if you just are willing to put the time and non-judgment into yourself in. So Jason has a great point and uh, keep talking to people like that, Jason. You're definitely spreading the love. Bev, I saw an article um, that said, the headline said, ordering out is so 2016. Mm-hmm. And that 2017 is the year of the of cooking. So talk about that and how that impacts you in terms of the farmer's market. Well, USDA says that uh, 40 cents on every dollar is spent on prepared meals. Wow. So that's a wake-up call for all of us, and, and we're, uh, we're running in that direction uh, for 2017. And, and I think that more and more people uh, don't have the time because I think time is the commodity right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we, we need to take into consideration what we are eating when we're eating out because you, you can have, and, and we're trying to go in that, that um, as Keith said, the, the comfort food, but we want to make it a healthy comfort food. You can do your mashed potatoes. What, yeah, I was going to say, what is a healthy comfort food? Well, like you can take mashed potatoes, but you can mix in some cauliflower with it to sort of cut some of that. Um, there's just tons of ways that, I mean, you can make a, a meatloaf with lean turkey and instead of breadcrumbs, you can use oatmeal. So, okay. I mean, there, there are ways to, to make these things happen. And I think at the market, what Beth and I are trying to do is, as well as everybody else in the market, is trying to guide people in a direction where there are, uh, they, they have the opportunity to, to eat more fruits and vegetables. Because we have to have five servings, right? Right. (laughs) Yes. So, um, and actually, uh, there are some diets that are recommended for folks, for example, with hypertension, the DASH diet, they actually encourage nine servings of vegetables and fruit a day. So the the movement toward health really has to include eating more fruits and vegetables. Um, They are full of phytonutrients. They are full of fiber. Um, What we know when we look at other cultures that eat less processed food is that they have much, much lower rates of... um, digestive diseases and colon cancers. So we have to pay attention. We have to recognize in the past 50 years, our food culture has changed rapidly Mm -hmm. and our um, food behavior has not kept up. We are not, it's, I always say it's the stigma of smoking, right? So we are not paying attention to the food um, changes the same way that we did to the the effect of smoking on American health. So it's taking some time, but I think we're getting there. I see a lot of the people in the farmer's market are young people. I think um, we're trying to get in touch with what I consider to be the future parents of our community. So teenagers and try to at least give some intervention that helps them understand that they have they have access to this food. They might have to seek it out. Um, and it's not on every corner, but they're going to be given yet. yet, yet, yet. <laughs> but they're going to be given opportunities. I want to point to to something that you guys were talking about as far as um, convenience, right? And time saving food. So, r- you know, ultimately perfection, you know, is something that for a lot of people is intimidating. And that's not what I think anybody's suggesting. But if you can get a pattern of eating that reduces the amount of fat, sugar, and salt you're consuming and um, increases the amount of fruits and vegetables that you're eating, you're typically going to see better health outcomes. So if you are traveling, make sure that you have, I call it a top five list. What are the places that I'm going to come across in my travel um, that are convenient to me, and then I'm going to know exactly what is on that menu that I can order versus walking in blind and then trying to make a decision while all of, I call it the food noise is happening, the smell of the French fries, seeing what other people are eating. So if you do that, that planning ahead of time and visualize yourself ordering off the menu something that's supportive of your goals, obviously those would be health goals, you're going to be more successful in that environment. Let's see if we can get Robert in before we go to a break real quick. Robert's calling from Smithfield. Hi, Robert. You're on the air. I, I'm, uh, thank you. And thank you for taking my call. Uh-huh. Excellent program. I, uh, I, I have a little tip. Um, I, we do a lot of traveling. I'm retired. I'm almost 77 years old, and uh, I don't take any prescription medication. Mm. But I've had, uh, had to deal with high blood pressure, and diet's pretty important, but in the process of traveling, I always check to make sure they have a fitness room. And when I get in the fitness room, they've usually got it, the temperature down around 65. I want to get in there and get sweaty. And uh, I see these youngsters get in there, and they run the treadmill flat, and they're, they're running on it. I want to get my heart rate up to at least 130. So as I walk, I increase the angle and eventually get up to 15 degrees. And uh, or 
whatever that de- degree or setting, whatever it is. But never, hardly ever, will I go over two and a half to three miles an hour, and I get my heart rate up there. I'm not beating up my joints. Mm-hmm. I agree about taking the elevator up or, mm-hmm. or stairs going up, but take the elevator going down to reduce the impact on the body. So uh, you guys have covered pretty much everything, but <laughs> that that one little thing about beating up your joints. Uh, if you're not taking supplements uh, to uh, control that, uh, you're going to end up with arthritis by the time you're 55, 60. <laughs> Thank you so much, Robert, for the call. We appreciate it. I see you over there nodding away, Cortland. Go ahead and respond. <laughs> uh, what he's talking about is the low-impact cardio. Um, so you can do fasted uh, low-impact cardio, especially in this time of year. If you like, wake up in the morning, uh, just drink a bottle of water, and then maybe if you have time to walk 30 minutes, 45 minutes on a treadmill or, or wherever it may be. Um, but that low-impact is going to, again, save your joints um, with the running. I mean, you're getting like you're getting like 11 times your body weight impact on each on your knees and ankles every time your feet hit the ground uh just from, from a biomechanic standpoint so that saving your joints is going to be prime and and working out because if if your knees hurt or your joints hurt people are liable not to work out no joke <laughs> <laughs> i just discovered i have a torn meniscus in my knee so when you talk about knee pain right now uh, yeah working out is like not quite like at the top of the list but let me ask you a question is this a good time to start exercising Absolutely. and eating well? Because, Absolutely. you know, some people say, well, it's the holidays. What the heck? You know, why don't you just wait? Oh, until, you know, I told you about uh, that January, the first year. Okay. January first rule. <laughs> <laughs> I tell my patients, don't have a resolution, have a revolution. <laughs> yeah. ah. Don't don't wait to make a resolution. Start a day, have a revolution. And so just start from the, from day just one. Get just, just get radical today. Like, just make it make happen. Make a change today. <laughs> we always Stop. put things off if we if you can. I mean, that's just human nature. And I tell people, why put off tomorrow what you can do today? I mean, it's just, I mean, really, if people want to, they just bound and determine they're going to eat whatever they want on Christmas. I just say, listen, I mean, you know, I can't beat you up and tell you don't do one thing or the other, but what are you doing up until Christmas Day? Mm -hmm. What are you doing the day after Christmas and beyond? And like I say, people will find a way to do a wide sweep and just Mm -hmm. cover the whole holiday season Mm -hmm. doing whatever, whenever, however, without taking any consideration to how it's going to impact. I told you that throwing caution to the wind. It's easy to do that. That's always the easier approach, but it won't get you where you want to be. Mm-hmm. And and getting a, just a quick comment about sure. blood pressure. You know, I have a patient, and I hope he's not listening, but I'm not going to say his name anyway. But <laughs> one of the things with him, you know, and I tell people all the time, those with hypertension, it reflects on, uh, I think it was Robert that called a little while ago, uh, and this guy, when he walks, and he will walk, he's probably in his mid-70s. When he walks, he'll go five miles every day when he's deciding to walk. Mm-hmm. His pressure is always, always controlled on almost no medicine. Mm-hmm. I always know when he stops. When he comes to the office, his pressures are up. I said, you stopped walking, didn't you? Mm-hmm. And he'll say, yeah, I've been a little slack the last couple of weeks. There is a strong correlation of the activity and blood pressure. If you look at any data anywhere, it all says the same thing. The more you are active, the lower your blood pressure will be. Absolutely. So, we, so that's a, a, a word to the wise to get out there and get active. I'm going to save alcohol till we come back after the break <laughs> because I want to talk a little bit about that. But let's talk about fat shaming for a minute because a lot of that happens during the holidays too where people will go, you know, oh, are you going to eat that? Sure. You know, uh, <laughs> absolutely. And Beth, mm-hmm. respond to that. I mean, is that is that a a way to encourage, or does that make someone stuff two more cookies in their mouth instead? <laughs> so I, you know, my my own personal experience. Um, uh, I, you know, my whole life I've had. Um, uh, I don't. I say I don't have a necessarily a weight problem my whole life, but I have a food problem my whole life. So a lot of the work that I do with my patients, um, it was stems from my need to control and modify my own behavior. What I have found is that just from my own personal experience, when people comment about what I'm eating, um, it, it makes me feel like number one, I, I say worry about yourself, but number two, um, I think we've just gotten into a culture where we feel like we can comment on everybody else's behavior because it's part of where we have social media, um, and people are putting stuff out there and they're expecting a response. It's a different situation where you're in, you know, with friends and family and they feel like they can, you know, basically put you on display or put your behavior under, um, 
a critique. So I think that it absolutely has a negative effect on people's eating behavior. I think that a lot of times people misunderstand uh, why people are overweight and just think it's because you can't control what you're eating, which is a myth. Um, I, for all of the evidence that we have shows that our environment is key um, and that because our food culture has changed so rapidly without open discussion about what effect that has on um, our behavior, people misunderstand why weight gain happens. Some people have been um, physically active in the past and had an injury. Mm -hmm. And they did not change their food behavior. So they were eating to the exercise level. And then when they had an injury and became more sedentary, they were still eating yeah, at that level, level. And that caused weight gain. Yeah. So it could be a matter of, you know, I gained a lot of weight in a short period of time where it could be, you know, uh, under stress, lack of um, support, or maybe even attentiveness. I just eat more than my boundary by several hundred calories a day. And so the weight comes on slowly. I call that insidious weight gain. And we become accustomed to that weight and we modify our lives to accommodate for that weight gain. We'll talk some more about this, but we got to go over to Pledge Central very quickly to find out how we're doing, because I think hopefully we're making progress on that $2,000 match. Are we, Sandra? We are indeed. Thank you, Barbara. Yes. Sandra Woodward, Dan Cawley with you. With a brief check on uh, our campaign here, and we do indeed have about 1200 left in that pot available for folks who might want to get in on this dollar for dollar match happening right now during the final hours of our holiday membership drive. 889 Six seven five seven eight eight nine nine four seven six. Make that pledge of support to another view. Make that pledge of support to twenty four seven programming here on WHRV that you count on, that you rely on every single day, and another view that you rely on to be here every Friday at noon. If you love it, support it. Eight eight nine nine four seven six. Dollar for dollar happening right now. Well, we're talking about uh, you know hoping to raise the two thousand dollars for the challenge, but kind of like the difference between the weight problem and the food problem. We don't have a money problem we have a member problem ah, what we need yes. are people we know you're out there we know you're listening and you're probably uh hiding the fries right now as you're listening to the conversation <laughs> but what we want you to do is call right now and support this program thank you for that call there's one right now and see we, by the time this is done we won't have that member problem anymore 889-9476 1-800-940-7170 remember we're in challenge time for the show so every call you make for another view means every dollar is two dollars to support the program. 889-9476-757, 889-9476. You own a little piece of another view when you're a member. Uh, it, it, that's the way it works. We take this money and every bit of it goes towards the programming that you enjoy here 24-7 on WHRV. That's why we have these membership drives. That's why it's called member-supported public radio. And it is like investing in what you love. And you get a return on it. You get a return every time you turn on the dial, every time you tune into another view. You're getting a return on your money. There's really no better investment out there. 889-9476. And if you are a member and if you've given already, thank you for your support. Why not give the gift of public radio? Sure, give it to someone else and let them know that they're making a difference in the community. Uh, and Because let's, let's, let's face it, the kinds of conversation that Barbara has here every Friday, you're not going to hear anywhere else on the dial. Nope. Um, the kinds of programming we hear on WHRV, you're not going to hear anywhere else on the dial. Nope. The depth, the information, the insight, the knowledge, the expertise, the commitment to taking the time to actually have these conversations that we need to, to realize that things aren't as easy as a lot of the the pundits and plaudits say that that there are complexities to life and we give them a chance to actually to, to talk about them here. So give us a call. Become a member. Make these phones ring. Another view needs another you. Call us at 889. Oh, Dan, you I like that? that. You yes. Like that. Trademark. You know, Trademark. 889-9476 or 1-800-940-7170. And there are people standing by to take your call. Wonderful people from the Norfolk Animal Care Adoption Center because it is Pet Pledge Friday, folks. Thank you all from the Norfolk Animal Care Adoption Center for being here with us today. So now let's get these phones ringing and Make them do some work. And eight, you know, eight, Sandra, nine. I wanted to say, uh, Sandra and Dan, um, all of the uh, crew for Another View are also members of WHRV. Absolutely. You know, this is something that is very unique in, in our public radio um, industry because people actually become members of the place where they work, mm -hmm. um, which you normally don't find in other industries. So we well, believe in what we do. And right. so we hope that you would join us, too, by dialing 889-9476 and becoming a member 
member of WHRV. We've got uh, a little over 1200 bucks left in that uh, little pot of uh, money there. Uh, and you can get a dollar for dollar match up to 2000 That's what we're going for here. Make these phones ring. 889-9476, WHRV.org. And thank call you for your now. support. Call now. Okay. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate that. Hopefully you will call in 889-9476 to make your pledge of support. Or you dial 440-2665 to join us for our conversation. We're talking about staying on track during the new year. Um, nutritionist Gail Pearson is joining joining us on the phone um, from Williamsburg. And Gail, what types of advice do you have for people to stay on track this holiday season? Well, it's also always a difficult time, and I agree with the previous um, comments, is that we also influence by our environment. And I usually help patients just keep focused and actually just the goal is to maintain weight during the holiday and not try to lose it. If they can maintain it, they've done well. Ah, ah and, okay. and And what I usually let patients know is, you know, eat special foods that you don't normally eat, but just control the portion and and don't go to places hungry. And it's okay to say no. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I always tell people, just be easy on the bubbly because, you know, after that second drink, usually they say, what the heck? <laughs> well, and that, you know, that's a very good point that I wanted to bring up, too, because if you do decide to indulge, then should you say what the heck and keep going or should you stop? <laughs> you know the answer to that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good, but that's some, a good question. But some people say, go ahead, Beth. Some people say, you know, I, uh, I've already blown it. Right. So, you know, what what if I get back on track tomorrow? Right. Uh, you know, I always, I use the word boundaries a lot in the work that we do. And um, people, uh, it makes people a little uncomfortable because, uh, you know, we don't want to have boundaries, right? We want to, we want to be rebels and kick the door down and do what we want. So people don't really like the idea of boundaries, food boundaries, especially. Um, it's not something that we practice a lot in our current food culture. Um, um, and then with alcohol, we are encouraged by the culture to use uh, the holiday as an excuse to overindulge. But it is a, if we're talking about healthfulness in general, I think it's important to realize that there is a limit to how much alcohol your body can process in a healthy way in a short period of time. So, in fact, you know, kind of just reframing that conversation to, you know, really two drinks is all really my body can tolerate in a sitting. And then what I tell people is do a spritzer. So if you like wine, make wine spritzers or um, substitute in between your drinks with a sparkling Sparkle like club soda with lime and maybe a little splash of pomegranate or cranberry and put a cocktail to, um, uh, straw in there. And it feels <laughs> like a cocktail and people are less likely to offer you a drink if it looks like you already have a drink in your hand. So if you make, I call it a mocktail, if you make a mocktail for yourself and carry it around, people are not as likely to offer you another drink. But if you have nothing in your hand as a hostess, people are going to be like, oh, you need a cocktail. Well, Gail, I need to ask you this, though, because since you're the nutritionist, just how many calories are in that uh, spiked eggnog? Oh my. No, yeah. Oh my. Four, oh my. I, saw, I watched that. I saw that recently. You don't want to know. Yeah, you don't want to know. No, just, I really do. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, that happens to be one of my favorites. So I'm just curious how many well, calories uh, are in there? The of liquor itself is 100 calories. Okay. And then you've got the eggnog. That depends on if you're having a half a cup of eggnog or a cup of eggnog. Because mm -hmm. eggnog is very high in fat and sugar, so you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have at least. And I don't have the right, exact figures in front of me, mm -hmm. but even with a, a cup of eggnog, you got a minimum of two hundred. And so that. that could be a easily uh, a three hundred calorie drink, which could have been wow. Yeah, I saw, I yeah. saw that recently. I looked saw, at the back mm -hmm. of one, um, and I, and I can't and I'm with like her. I can't remember the exact number, but I remember it was it was a few hundred calories. It was a lot. I mean, yes. it was more than. Soda, I mean, because if you really look at when you pour it out, it comes out thick. You yes, know? It does. <laughs> I mean, it just looks like a sugary, just uh, a mess. And it's just, I mean, even when you taste it, it's just, 
is I mean, you almost gain five pounds just tasting <laughs> the stuff. But that I know eggnog is probably one of the highest calorie drinks yeah. out there. There are some alternatives that I wanted to point out. I noticed on the market a couple of years ago that there's um there's some nogs made from uh, almond milk. So there's an almond mm-hmm. nog. Um, it typically has less fat, and so you're looking at maybe. But what does it taste like? I, well, I'll tell you. I have a patient who who has substituted her typical eggnog at the holidays, and she says that she feels it's several hundred calories less. So I would say probably looking at the you know again three out of four hundred calories. You're looking at maybe two to three, and then also just decide I can have one glass. That's my favorite, so I'm going to have that one glass, but one and done. So one kind and, of have that one and done. One and done for the season, or one and done one for and the done day. And, <laughs> right. And what is your caloric boundary? Like, what is your goal? Yeah. You know, one yeah. question I want to bring up to the group, mm-hmm. and, and I think want the listening audience to hear this as well, is the issue of when you talk about more fruits and vegetables, one of the key questions should be what type of fruits and vegetables are we talking about? Because you can have some, you know, and really like, like bananas as an example, is really high in sugar. Uh, you know, so you have some fruits, you talk about the berries that are lower in sugars. It, the question is, what are you picking? To eat versus, yeah. like, say, like uh, green like sweet peas, which are going to be higher in sugar than something like collard greens. So it's really a matter of picking which food group out of those fruits and vegetables you should be focusing on. Because I can create a lot of misery for myself eating fruits and vegetables, depending on what I pick. Sure. So what I'm you throw pick that and out. also how you serve it. Yeah, yeah. And right. how, you how, it's how you prepare it, right? So yeah. So. Uh, just to your to your point, there's a, a government website, fruit and veggies matter dot com, more matters dot com. So you guys can look that up. It's actually a CDC's website, fruit and veggies more matters dot com or dot gov. Okay. And that they have a lot of information on there about what fruits and vegetables are higher in um, calories because they may be more cal- uh, more dense. So, for example, hard squashes um, or higher in sugar, like bananas and tropical fruit versus stone fruit and berries, which are low in the glycemic index. And then and obviously, preparation is key. I'm from the South. I only ate collard greens one way my whole life. <laughs> and y'all all know what that is. But my number one tip for people who love seasoned vegetables is switch from the fat back to um, smoked turkey wings. Yeah. And it makes a huge difference in the fat content, but it's very flavorful. And so you feel like you're you know, still getting that kind of, it's tradition. And there's a lot of ritual that's important in the food that we prepare, especially in the South. Mm-hmm. And we all know why comfort food is higher in fat, sugar, and sauce, because we had to do more with less. So the foods that we're used to having, you know, they're really rooted in ritual and tradition. And so we just need to say, I want to have the same experience, but I realize I have to make changes for my health. And then again, with sweet potatoes, right? Just have roasted sweet potatoes with cinnamon instead of covered instead with of the butter and the sugar and, right. and all of exactly. that. Exactly. Do you want to add anything to that, Gail? Is Gail still with us? Fruit oh, okay. or vegetable because they're all so important. I show people the right portion of the fruit that they like to eat. Mm-hmm. And so when we start picking and choosing between the healthy foods, I think that's what confuses people Mm -hmm. because I don't think there are, and I believe there's no unhealthy fruit. Mm -hmm. It's just bad portion. Yep. And so I, I'm just so in, Happy that somebody's actually eating a fruit or vegetable. I would never talk them out of it. <laughs> I, said, I, said I will show you how much you can have of it. Yes. But I want, I'm not going to talk anybody out of a, a fruit um, uh, out of a food that was created. Okay, let's go to it. Derek in Norfolk. Hi, Derek. You're on the air. Hi, thank you. I love your show. Thank um, you. I just wanted to say um, I was a person who struggled with my weight my whole life. I'm 43 years old now. A lot of my life I was over 300 pounds, like 320. Once I weighed myself off of sugar, I've been in shape in around 220 pounds or so since then. And sugar is just the single biggest factor, it seems, in people gaining weight. And um, and now I just have a diet of I eat primarily um, vegetables and lean proteins, more than anything, I cook at home because nothing out there in the convenience, at, you know, stores and um, fast food restaurants, everything is based around sugar. And when I was in the military, I noticed as I went around the world that we eat in America a lot more sugar than other places. Yeah. So, so how did you, got, Derek, how did you wean yourself? It took it took about a month of really hard discipline of just making sure I, did, I didn't go near the rice, potatoes, noodles and pasta, no sweets. Uh, it took about a good month, and after I got used to that, now the taste of sugar is so extremely sweet that it's too sweet for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. 80% okay. of the foods Definitely. that we eat has added sugar. Processed. 80%. Processed foods. Yeah. 
processed foods has added sugar. So a lot of times, like bread, we don't even know we're eating the sugar, but we're eating the sugar. Mm -hmm. And that's why reading in in labels and ingredients is so critical to your journey, because that's what we're on is a journey. Derek, thanks so much for the call. Um, It sounds like he's he's very disciplined, though, and that's what it takes. Uh, There's a question for you from Facebook, Cortland. It says, should you always plan to work out if you know you're going to be eating high-calorie foods later in the day? Absolutely, especially if you know if you know your uh, caloric content is going to be really high at any given time, you definitely want to try to get some type of exercise in, even if it's a a walk around your a walk around your neighborhood or uh, again doing some things just right where you are, pumping out like fifteen body weight squats. It was uh it's his book, The Four Hour Body. Um, I can't remember the author's name right now, um, mm-hmm. but he was speaking on different things, how you can do just to stay in shape if you don't have that hour block to work out. Wake up in the morning, do a five-minute workout. Uh, get out of the shower, do a five-minute workout. Uh, leave after you And finish. that really works. Huh? Absolutely, because sure it, keeps your metabol- it keeps your metabolism or your body primed for activity, which keeps your metabolism up throughout the entire day, whether as you work out one hour a day, the same time every single day. Your circadian rhythm is going to just get used to that. So you're gonna, your body's going to be ready for activity between the hours of whatever time that you train, and then the rest of the time you're not going to be ready for that activity. So it boosts your overall, like your overall so daily. So does that mean then if, you, if you're going to the gym on a regular basis, should you switch up the hours, switch up the times? Absolutely, because that will, again, train your body just to be ready throughout the day. Um, because, of, like, in the circadian cycle, once you, uh, like, get solidified into a workout, you get up every morning, you go to the gym at 6 o'clock every day. But then I noticed that when I was competing, if I trained a certain time in the evening and then my competition was on a Saturday at 12 o'clock, but I always trained at 4 p.m., I noticed that my body wasn't the same. My mental wasn't the same. You know, I wasn't as awake or things like that. But when you kind of just throw it in there random times, your body's, like, already always ready um, just with the warm-up and, and different things like that. So... Uh, just trying to spread it out is going to be your best way. Doing doing like 15 squats after you have that after you have that eggnog, like doing like whatever, <laughs> like right there, <laughs> right there. <laughs> uh, like, Absolutely. Uh, so ha- can you walk out the door for five minutes and back for five minutes? How th- how many times a day can you do that during during Christmas and Thanksgiving? So you know if you're cooking and you're in the kitchen for hours at a time, you know at the top of the hour, tell yourself I have to walk out for five and back for five. And if it's mm-hmm. cold outside, you're going to walk pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. How about turning on some music and dancing? Dancing. While you're Absolutely. <laughs> Dancing. Get the kids. Um, a lot of the kids now, they have um, the the fi- uh, the game um, systems yeah. that have exercise on them. Mm-hmm. So, a- again, ask the family, hey, can we do something a little different this year? Instead of everybody sitting down after dinner, let's plug <laughs> in <ritual>. the kids. <laughs> dance, dance revolution and have a dance mm-hmm. off. Yeah. And, you know, that it's just that shift in behaviors from sedentary to just slightly less sedentary over time makes a huge difference in not only weight management, but also long term health outcomes. Bev, let's talk about the farmer's market for a little bit because you, you, you are people coming, continuing to come? Are things changing? We, we've What's seen happening? a we've seen a decline in business. Um, I'm not sure why. I I think people are getting again further and further away of having to cook. So one of the things that we're working on is trying to do more teen cooking classes and things to get people engaged, but. Um, it's interesting and fascinating that, that people just don't seem to want to gravitate to uh, making dinners and, and making meals, which is kind of frightening for, um, for, the, for, future. <laughs> for, for the future for our health. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're going to try to do everything we can do to inspire and encourage people to... Uh, do you think part of it is intimidation because they don't know how Absolutely. to cook? Because they, they don't pass mm-hmm. down recipes it's like gone. you know like we used to we got do two generations that don't yeah. know how to cook and and they walk around and they look at the stuff and they go how what do i do with that what do i do with that yeah. I, it's amazing i i would say um <laughs> that's a key issue is that people think well first of all i have to be able to cook gourmet food for it to be tasty i have to spend a lot of time cooking and preparing food yeah. and there are really a lot of simple ways to prepare food that don't take a lot like a lot of time like in a crock pot for example like i encourage all of my patients to learn how to use a crock pot so they can put large amounts of vegetables in that crock pot before they go to work mm-hmm. come home and add some stock to those and have you know a nice stew or soup 
right? Portland's over here right disagreeing. And disagreeing beans and rice, you. rice and beans, right? All over the world, people sustain themselves on that food. But obviously, knowing what the portion of the beans and rice is, and they should be accompanied by, obviously, dark green leafy, you know, vegetables and um, high water content vegetables like cucumbers and cabbage, right? Those are simple foods to prepare, and they can be really, really tasty. But I think people have just lost touch with preparing their own food. Okay, one, Keith. One question I want to throw out, just because I know some people may ask this, is uh, two things. One is when you talk about like rice, what type of rice? Right. There's different types out there. Two, the use of artificial sweeteners. What's the general gist of that? I mean, I know I've kind of used to do equal. I stopped doing that. I do more stevia now. Just this, they say it's supposed to be healthier, but I want to throw this out there to get people. Let me get. Let's get Gail to answer that first, okay. yes. and then we'll come to you, Beth. Gail, did you hear Dr. Newby? Yes. Okay. Well, I always refer people to, uh, again, the American Cancer Society website with regards to substitute sweetness because they've get, they're, they're studied it more than anybody. Mm-hmm. And their mm-hmm. concern is, again, how, how you use it. But, again, we already know it doesn't cause cancer. But the, the point of it is I think people uh, tend to uh, use too much of it is what I see. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't know how to use it. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, stevia is a wonderful uh, alternative. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just think that it's how to use it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's, it's personal preference, and as far as safety is concerned, I think there is a concern, but I think that the problem is the, the amount that I see people mm-hmm. using. And, and his question about what type of rice? Do, the rice, should it be again, brown? The, the, the carbohydrates are going to be the same, okay. and the calories are going to be the same, but the nutrition isn't going to be the same. Right. And so, of course, we want to focus on whole grains of all all the time, and the proper portion. Again, even when people eat the right food and the healthy food, somehow in the back of their mind they're thinking, <laughs> I don't need to control the portion anymore. Right. And so even with brown rice, uh, it needs to stop at a cup. <laughs> yes, gotcha. ma'am. Yeah, yeah. But portion control is important. Gail, I know we need to let you go. Can you tell people how they can reach you if they have other questions or is there a website where we can get in contact with you? Uh, sure. If you go to Top Water Physicians Multi-Specialty Group. Mm-hmm. Um, we have our own website, and okay. I'm listed at one of the providers. I'm a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes educator. We have offices on the south side. We have offices in Williamsburg and in Newport News. Okay, great. Thank you so much for joining us Thank on Another you. View. We really appreciate Thank that. Thank you very much. Take I enjoyed care. it. All Have a good holiday. So, Beth, you want to respond to Dr. Newby's question? Sure. So, um, as far as patients who are pre-diabetic or diabetic, um, having them stop drinking sugar is key. Having them, you know, reduce the amount of sugar, that's key. So it's kind of a step down process in that, you know, if you're drinking regular soda and you're drinking six regular sodas a day, we want to get you on a diet soda, right, as soon as possible. And then we want to say um, drinking more water is what we really want to steer towards. So now once I have you on diet soda, I'm going to ask you to reduce the number of sodas that you're drinking and then maybe replace with a water that has, I always tell people it's the sweetness that they're craving. So maybe like a, um, a so crystal it, is light. It, is it good for some people to just stop uh, and then others have to gradually step down. I mean, in other words, it, depending individual. on depending on the individual, Absolutely. in terms of how you can stop doing Absolutely. a bad behavior. And 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 behavior, you know, I think is a, it's a shaping that we're doing, and we're saying to ourselves, you know, l- l- instead of me trying to get to perfect tomorrow, let me say what I can do today, and then when I feel comfortable with that, and it's I've stretched myself, but now that new behavior feels comfortable to me. Now I'm ready to go on to the next set of healthy behaviors. So because we don't want to stress people people when we ask them to make these changes too quickly because they'll typically feel stressed and quit completely. If we stretch them and we ask them to make changes over time, stepping toward that ideal diet management, then I think people feel more empowered. They feel more successful and they feel like they can do it long term. Okay. We've only got a few minutes left. So I want to get from each of you um, some, a tip for people to make it through the holidays. Okay, so let's start with you, Courtland. Uh, try to time your workouts close to meals. So if you can get a workout in 30 minutes after uh, that you eat or before that you eat, um, your, metaboli- your metabolism is going to be uh, much higher than normal. Uh, so then you can, uh, you can process that food much better. Okay. And how do people reach you? Uh, I'm on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, on uh, at ProWaxman, uh, Pro underscore Waxman. 
And then you can find me at Cortland Mariner on Facebook. Um, got plenty of tips and videos for you. Fantastic. So the big thing is keep moving. Keep moving. Love as much it. as you can. Keep moving. <laughs> as keep much moving. as you can. Love it. That's Jernigan. <laughs> I'm going to say um, plan ahead. Um, either eat a high volume, low calorie meal before you go into that challenging food environment or take that food with you so that you can serve yourself that food first and then choose two to three things that you really enjoy from the other foods and still have a boundary. So a smaller portion and serve yourself. Don't let other people serve you. Serve yourself. Very good. And how do, um, how do we reach you? Well, I'm a volunteer at the farmer's market. And so I invite everybody to come down to the farmer's farmer's market and meet, meet us and see what we do there. Okay. Fantastic. Beth. I'm going to say, I'm, Bev. I know. Bev. I'm the V. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say, wait 20 minutes before you have dessert. Let your food settle. And then you might look at that dessert a little differently. Um, I found that to be helpful. And um, I'll pass it on. Okay. And how, and people all, find the far, farmer's market way. All you got to do is Google Five Points Farm Market. <laughs> and and uh, our brand new website will pop up. But it's the number 5 PTS Farm, F A R M. M-A-R-K dot org. Okay. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Dr. Newby, you got the last word. And what happens when that lady says, oh, you're not going to eat my pound cake. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you always tell everybody, you know, you have to make those choices. You can always say, well, take some with me. That way you don't hurt their feelings and toss it somewhere after you leave. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but I think like anything else, just make sure you're, you're keeping those boundaries, as was mentioned earlier, and the activity needs to stay high. And make sure that, you know, and not to throw my doctor stuff in there, but make sure you're going to see your doc. Go those to those appointments. Make sure you get that basic understanding of where you are. And I know they say avoidance and ignorance is bliss, but it's not going to help you down the road. Go have that, have yourself evaluate, checked out, make sure you know exactly where you are in your health so you can plan for these holidays a little bit more efficiently and effectively. Fantastic. Thank you all so much for joining us. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year Same to each of you. you. And we will be right back. Hang all the mistletoe. I'm gonna get to know you better. This Christmas and as we trim the tree, how much fun it's going to be together. This Christmas, the fireside's blazing bright. We're caroling through the night. And this Christmas... And welcome back. Producer Lisa Godley, audio engineer Victor Bowen, and I are so very grateful for those of you who support Another View, not only by listening, but by becoming a member. Now, there's still time. Dial 889-9476. I understand we have $700 left of that challenge money. So let's do it. by now. Between now, we got three minutes to get that, those dollars in. 889-9476. Be able to tell the volunteer how much you love Another View. Support what you love, and we thank you so very, very much. Make that call now, 889-9476. Next week, we bring you special holiday programming, Living on Earth, brings together Celtic and African-American tales on the theme of hope. So that should be a good show. And the following Friday, we bring you the best of Another View's positive stories, uplifting and inspiring stories about the good things happening in the African-American community. Another View will join you again live on Friday, January the 6th, 2017, when we talk with Rashad Shabazz, author of Spatializing Blackness, Architectures of Confinement and Black Masculinity in Chicago. It's a fascinating look at history, geography, race, and gender studies to highlight the relationship between people and place and race and gender. Our theme music was composed and performed by Jay Sennett. Lisa Godley is our show producer. Victor Bowen is our audio engineer. And Nicholas Thomas, thank you so much. You've been a fabulous intern with us. Today is his last day. On behalf of the Another View crew, we wish you a belated Malad Unnabi, or celebration of the Prophet Muhammad's birthday. Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year, and a very, very Merry Christmas. We'll be back live January 6, 2017. Thanks for listening, everybody, and thank you for supporting Another View.
Christmas will be a very special Christmas. 